In this video, we will be talking about something called lattice energy. And we'll just abbreviate that, abbreviate that simply as LE. And lattice energy is associated with ionic compounds. And let me just give you the definition before we move on. It is the energy associated with the formation of a solid ionic compound Sorry, something's making a funny noise here. Compound, which is to say a lattice, and I'll explain that in a second. From gaseous ions. Okay, so just a simple example. Just using NaCl, I'll use NaCl a lot just because it's very common. Um, so if we have gaseous sodium ions plus gaseous chloride ions, we get NaCl solid. And the energy change, what we call the delta H, and we'll talk about delta H later on in the semester. Whatever that is, that's the lattice energy. Okay. Um, and why do we call it lattice energy? Let's talk about that real quick. So if we look at a little sodium chloride crystal, all it is is alternating sodiums and chlorides forever and ever, at least until we get to the edge of the crystal. And it just alternates like this. as far as the crystal extends. So down here, there's alternating sodiums and chlorides. Even into three dimensions, there's alternating sodiums and chlorides. So if you think about lattice work, like um, you know, maybe your grandparents have roses climbing on a lattice, like you can buy at Home Depot, uh, it's kind of a grid pattern. So that's where we get the term lattice energy. Because to form this lattice, this, this grid that we see here, that's the energy associated uh, with that process. Okay? And we have a very simple equation. We're not, I'm not going to have you do any calculations with the equation. We're just going to look at it. So the lattice energy is equal to, uh, equal to K times Q1 times Q2 all over D. Okay, so let me annotate that really quickly. K is just a constant. And every lattice has its own constant. Every ionic compound, that is, has its own constant. Not worried about that at all. I'm, like I said, I'm not going to have you do calculations here. And in case you're curious, um, the K for a constant is common in chemistry because uh, of German the German language, um, uh, they were the powerhouse of the chemical world before World War II. Anyway, um, Q1 is the cation charge. And Q2 is the anion charge. And when I say cation charge, anion charge, I'm really just talking uh, one negative, two negative, three negative, so on. Same thing for the cation charge. One positive, two positive, three positive, dot, dot, dot. Running into my periodic table there. Okay, and then finally on the bottom, we have D. And that's the distance between... The nuclei. So in other words, 
That's how far apart, in this instance, the sodium and the chloride are. Okay. So what does uh, lattice energy depend largely on? Well, it depends on the charge, and it depends on the distance between them. In other words, when we say distance, what are we really talking about? This is ionic radii. But I'll tell you one little secret about this, and that is that charge is always more important than radius. Charge is more important than the radii are. What does that mean? Well, if you have um, Two compounds you're trying to decide, well, gosh, is the lattice energy higher in this one versus this one? The one with the biggest magnitude charges, like the plus two, minus two, that's always going to have a higher lattice energy than something with a, uh, a um, plus one, minus one. So let me give you an example of that. Okay, and exactly what I just said, MgO versus NaCl. Now ask yourself, which one has the highest lattice energy? Let me just grab my periodic table here. Bring it down. Oops. Oh, man. There we go. No. This doesn't happen with paper, does it? Okay. Let's look at MgO versus NaCl. Mg... Let's use highlighter, sorry. Mg right there, oxygen right there. Um, NaCl, I think you all know where those are, but Na is right there and Cl is right there. So if we look at these, um, which one's bigger? Well, obviously between the anions, chlorine is bigger or, I'm sorry, chloride is bigger than oxide, okay? Between the cations, they're a pretty similar size. But more importantly than that, what is the charge on these ions? Well, we have an Mg2 plus and an O2 minus. And we have an Na plus and a Cl minus. What does that mean? Well, if the cations and the anions were exactly the same size, this one would have a four times the magnesium oxide would have a lattice, lattice energy four times bigger than the sodium chloride, simply because we have a plus two times a negative two versus a plus one times a negative one. And something else just um, for your interest, because I know you're all interested in this, what would happen if you have a plus two with a plus two? Well, what you would get, if we go back up to the lattice energy, we would get a positive lattice energy, and that would not form a lattice. We have to have a, posit a positive and a negative here to get a negative lattice energy. Maybe I didn't mention that this is always negative. Good thing I just thought of that. It's always negative, and that comes from the charges on those ions. Okay, so there's lattice energy. Just remember, the large charges give you a stronger lattice or a higher lattice energy.